Hey guys, how are ya? I decided to do this video without a script, so we're just gonna kinda jump right in. A lot of the footage is gonna be kind of messy, uh, just because, you know, conversion issues and whatnot. I did everything I could do, and by everything I could do, I mean eight hours of trying to get it to work. So most of the videos are good, most of the pictures are clean, and it, I'm just gonna layer, layer it over gameplay for you so you have something to look at, and it's not just a bunch of static images. But anyway, I guess we'll start right from the beginning. So first off, we entered the building, uh, the George R. Brown Convention Center, I think it was called, and that place was huge. And we were walking through these sky bridges and kind of marveling at the, the tall buildings around us and the things that we're not used to coming from little Oklahoma. And uh, as we're walking through, I noticed one person walking up. It, it looked like a, like a scene, like it had been planned or something, but one person was walking up through this, uh, the skyway to the right of us. And uh, I was like, is that? That's Grim. That's Grim from 343. And I'm not sure if it was disingenuous to, to talk to him from his surname, uh, but my sister, I actually was going to leave him alone, but my sister actually like pushed my back and was like, hey, go, like, go, go. So I was like, fine. Um, so I went up to him. I was, I was like, hey, are you, uh, are you Grim by chance? And he's like, yeah, um, I actually am. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, I, I enjoy your, the, the cannon fodders that you write and everything else. If you don't know, he's, uh, he's one of the major parts of the 343 PR group, I would say. Uh, but basically he does the uh, online on the Halo Waypoint, he does the cannon fodder segments, and he's a, he's a writer. Um, but he also does a lot of talking at, at different events, and so like on the mixer stage and everything, he was talking there. Uh, but anyway, I, I didn't ask him for a picture or anything because I knew he was in a rush to get up there, so I just talked to him for a second, told him I appreciated it, you know, the stuff that he had done, and, and yeah. So anyway, after that, uh, we went to get our badges. They gave us uh, a Game Pass Ultra or something. You know, it, it's like two weeks of anything you want on Xbox Live, so that's pretty cool. I might use that to go on. Uh, I've been thinking about that game, Sea of Thieves. I've never played it before, but apparently there's some kind of Halo tie-in that they've been promoting, so I might do that. But anyway, we got our badges and uh, a little uh, dog tag, which we got more later on. But we took those and immediately we're like, all right, we're here. We're in the venue. And we're all tired, so let's go get coffee. So they had a Starbucks indoors, and we were told not to bring anything from outside. So I'm like, okay, we're going to go to Starbucks. I'll get my coffee. It'll all be good. So I get it. They don't ice it like I asked them to. Not a big deal. Who cares? It's coffee. It tastes good. It's doing the job. And so we go to get into the venue, uh, to, to get into the actual Outpost Discovery Room. And I, I, I'm serious here. Like, this is one of their sponsored people like it's a it's a stupid thing to get annoyed about but I did spend money on it um, but it, it's sponsored by them Starbucks is it's on the walls and everything else and so whenever I got up to the front door and noticed that it was like people couldn't bring anything in including Starbucks I was like then why why are they sponsoring you like I'm supporting you guys through purchasing whatever anyway so we leave uh, like we we go to the front and I'll, I'll throw some videos in here but we got to the front and they just wouldn't let me bring it in so yeah he can't go in just yet because they don't allow coffee that they sell inside of the building that they have the convention in He's having to pour it out because he bought it in the place where they sold it. Please don't spill. Don't scald my skin. I can picture some chill hot being played right now. Yeah, dude. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Look at this sad scene. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's like the worst thing to buy up. How much was that, Ethan? Like five bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so after that, we returned and actually went in. And the first thing you see is Master Chief. Like, he's, I, I'm thinking he's actually two scale. So he's huge, right? He's seven foot two, I believe. He's up on this riser, and it's really, really neat. That song is breathing through the chambers, through the air ducts. Ethan, you're home. You can get closer, you know? And then you have, uh, there's also an elite to the right. 
he's huge, and I, I actually watched them making a video for this, so this, this was really crazy. And they actually have, like, tartar buildup on the teeth, like, there's so much detail. Um, but anyway, after we got in, we talked to one of the personnel. They were dressed up as, like, Oni reps, which is really cool. Because the whole, you know, the whole event was in canon, so that was really neat. Uh, so anyway, she led us around and, and offered, you know, what to do in what order. Which was good, because, uh, my little priority list that I had written went straight out the window. So basically, we go to uh, we go to the merch table first because we want to do that, and then we want to get signatures from Cortana and Master Chief, Steve Downs, and uh, Jen Taylor. And so, anyway, we go to the merch table. They have so much cool stuff, including a whole bunch of exclusive content, uh, like you know, different shirts you can only get there, different uh, like the hardcover of the Lone Wolf comic you could only get there, stuff like that. So. I got all that, you know, I got I got a, a good amount of cool stuff, and uh, after that we, we went on our way. Hey Ethan, who's your, who's your passenger? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after that we immediately were going to try and get signatures from Jen Taylor and Steve Downs, but the thing is, we got over there and we were told that they were capped and so we were talking to the the guy I guess he was like kind of security he was sitting there he had an earpiece in and everything and we were we were real nice to him we we're like dude it's okay it's not your fault like of course we wanted to see him but we understand and he's like you know what come with me and we're like okay and he takes us to the signing that I didn't even know was happening um, at that time and it was Frank O'Connor and, and Max Hoberman uh, Frank O'Connor being the lead of 343 and Max Hoberman having designed the multiplayer for Halo 2 and one other Halo, I think it's 3, uh, or he might even be doing more. To be honest, I, I really just know him for his Halo 2 multiplayer, but either way, uh, we got in line for that, and here's a little bit of footage from that. So we're about to get, uh, he's, he's signed, so he, yeah, I'm going to be the translator, I don't know if you can hear him. We're getting, some, we're getting stuff signed uh, by Frank O'Connor, by Frank O'Connor, there's people in here. Yeah. We could, uh, we might get gassed. It's a pretty small room. We don't, we barbecue in Seattle's terrible, I'm serious. So, so <laughs> here. Deal. Frank, nice to meet you. What's your name? Ethan. Ethan. Nice That's two Ethans in a row. Nice to meet you. Yep. Um, Big fan of y'all. Do you have a spot that you want? Uh, just, I guess, anywhere here, yeah. I guess. Right. Where y'all coming from? Uh, Oklahoma. Okay. You guys had quite an Oklahoma turnout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Populous place, though. I did have a question for you. Of course. So, what's it like trying to to bring new lore into a franchise that's so well established and so many things seem cemented? And a lot of that is stuff that is being sketched out before, yeah. and so you're filling it in. And so, a lot of them are like, "Is there? A, do we have a Spartan who was retired from the, right. the Spartan program?" And do we have? And we're like, "Yes, we do." do. We have... And so, in that sense, it's quite gratifying because right. you build all this content that doesn't. Right. Show off it's more else. it's more filling in spaces than than putting something on top. We generally have a good. Okay, so basically after that clip, uh, she didn't know what you know what all I was going to ask him and stuff. So she just kind of uh, had me take the reins on asking questions. But I asked Frank O'Connor, uh, what is it like to add new lore to a series and a franchise that seems to have everything so grounded already and so many things cemented? He explained it more as filling in the spaces, I guess, uh, and planning far out in the future so that you have something to latch on to if you ever decide to tell this certain story, which I thought was really neat. Um, and then I asked uh, Max Hoberman, I asked him, where did you start with Halo 2's multiplayer? He said it was him and one level designer, and the very first map was Lockout, the second was Midship. The first one didn't surprise me, but the second definitely did. And I asked him, because my personal favorite map is Ivory Tower, so I asked him, where does that fit in here? And he said, somewhere in the middle, he said, actually, it had a secret code name, and while him and Frank O'Connor were trying to think of it, I felt bad, like, I felt like maybe I cut him off, but I was like, Cyclotron, because you might know I've already done a, a video on this, so I, you, you might know that too at this point, but anyway, they were, they were impressed with that, and I got him to sign my very first copy of Halo Combat Evolved that I ever had, uh, that my dad got in 2001 when the game released. So anyway, that was really cool. I didn't get to, 
you know, see Master Chief and Cortana, but very, very few people did. I mean, we got there an hour early, and it was already booked. Um, so it should have basically been a VIP-only event. A lot of people complained about that, but I understand that not, not everything's going to go exactly how I wanted it to. So, anyway, that was really, really cool. Um, and so after that, we went back to Starbucks again to go take a little break, and I actually got a nice coffee. So Ethan is rebuying, rebuying what he originally bought. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about that, Ethan? Uh, it's it's stupid that I couldn't bring it in, even though it's an indoor thing that I got him from. And now he's gonna go get another one. So now I'm gonna get another, and then and then we're gonna drink that, and we're gonna leave. Get Make sure it's eat. ice this time. And they're gonna put ice in it this time. It's not gonna be hot. You wanna dance for me real quick? There's no. And I think I forgot to mention earlier when I got the merch that I actually got uh, I actually got a shirt for the event that actually got my name on it. So I'll uh, I'll let you see that little reveal here. But anyway, that was really cool. Next thing was you know we went on our little break, went outside to these musical teeter totters. So that it was pretty funny. We just didn't expect them to be out there. And then we you know we went, ate, came back, and we were ready for round two. And so. This is where people, you know, were complaining about lines and everything. You saw that a lot online. People talking about, oh, this line took forever, uh, you know, not not worth it, not worth the event, yada, yada, yada. Well, boo on those people because it was definitely worth the wait. Uh, I even made a, a new friend. He was there by himself. His name's Fernando. Shout out to Fernando. And uh, I kind of had him join our group because, I mean, why would you, why, why not? And so... Uh, he spent the rest of the day with us, and we stood in line for the VR section for three hours, I think it took. We've been in line... Oh, hey, Ethan, how long have we been in line? An hour and a half. An hour and a half. Uh, Ethan brought, brought some uh, reading material. It's very appropriate. How did you know that you'd need that? Uh, I just felt it in the air tonight. Yeah, I thought so. We'll see you guys in 90 minutes. Ooh. We, like, start Ooh. up here. Well, Ethan, you officially finished the book. How was it? Give us your book review. We have time. It was awesome. It was cool. Art was really good. It was a good book review. We'll never, we'll never get to play it. It's just going to be on the TV. Almost there. Ethan. What do you think? I'm excited. Yeah. I waited for like three hours. Yeah, three hours. I read a comic from beginning to end in yeah. the meantime. That was only like the first hour. <laughs> yeah. We're waiting on your review of that, by the way. Oh. It was it was good. That's my review. Uh, 10 out of 10. Right, right here, I need an annotation in like a 10 out of 10. And you need to edit that in, okay? Yeah. And, you know, it was worth it. It was really worth it. We played for about five minutes, I think. But it just, I mean, it makes sense. It's a big thing. And... I'm glad the lady told us to prioritize that first because it was such an experience. While waiting in the line, I actually read the entirety of the Lone Wolf comic and it's very cool because it actually ties in. I'm not going to go super deep in all the lore and everything because that would just take forever. Uh, and I might do that in a, a future video if anyone really wants it. But basically, there's an AI that oversees like all of Halo Outpost, so she's like integrated into most of the video screens and everything else, and her name is Gabriella. Um, so this, this comic ends with, it it's, tells her story, along with, you know, a story with Linda and uh, Dr. Chen and, and some interesting characters. But it was, it was really neat, really, really interesting, and it tied into the event well. And basically, Linda saves this AI, and the AI has all knowledge of human history, and so they use it for Halo Outpost. I mean, it makes sense, right, to, to give civilian humans the knowledge. So that was really cool. And then the VR itself was insane. They drop you in to, they drop you into Valhalla from Halo 3. And it looks kind of goofy, but it's not goofy when you're in it. When you're in it, you can see each other, you have height differences. I could tell which one was my sister and which one was Sean from the actual height difference of their characters. 
And the graphics in there, you know, of course I couldn't wear my glasses, but the thing is it doesn't matter because it's straight in your eyes. And it wasn't, it didn't hurt my eyes at all. It felt like I was actually there. And so I'm, I'm dodging and, and hiding behind walls and shooting out walls to shoot enemies and stuff with the plasma pistol. The charge actually worked. It was, it was super fun. Very, very fun. It seemed like the start of something huge. And I wish I had footage to show you guys of all that, but hopefully these pictures and, and short videos of people enjoying themselves will do. So anyway, yeah, we made friends with, uh, with my buddy Fernando, and we kind of went around and did the rest of the stuff. The next thing I think we did was uh, we went to this little Mega Bloks section. And I'll throw some pictures up here. They had a lot of really neat items there, and honestly, I'm, I'm a huge nerd, so I just really enjoyed checking it all out. And they even had this giant AGV ODST drop pod, as well as a wall where you could fill in. They were color coded, I guess, um, so you could fill in and make the Master Chief all together, and people just put their names on it and stuff. It was kind of funny. And uh, after that, I believe we searched for Hazel and uh, the other one. I can't think of it right. Think of his name right now. But either way, we searched for those two Spartans, Owen and Hazel. But we couldn't find them. I, I actually didn't get to see them all day. I know that Fernando did, but I didn't get to find them. But either way, it didn't matter. Uh, it would have been cool, but it's okay. So here's the next thing. We went to this cosplay section while we were searching for them. And all these really cool guys from the 405th, I actually talked to a few of them on how they made their suits and everything. But uh, I only got single pictures with a few of them, so those should be up here. And then here's a picture with all of them. It was really cool. Um, one big detail I'd really like to know is that the guy who did the ODST cosplay with the saxophone, that is that is the Halo with the best music. And so it blew me away when he actually played it. And I was like, wow, that's insane. And so that earned a lot of respect. And then there was, uh, I mean, there were multiple amazing cosplays. There was another one where somebody did Jerome, and he had the Alexa AI built into his system, which was super wild. Play drop. Um, very, 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 very cool. And then, so the next thing is the ring experience itself. We waited in line for a little while, saw the 405th. Okay, and so after we saw that, <laughs> we, uh, we went into the ring experience which is where I had been searching all day for Guilty Spark it's my favorite Halo character so we found him here but not before seeing the ring the a, a big section of the ring I think they said this one was from Delta Halo and then we saw a Sentinel full size and it kinda blew me away because I'm that had to have been retconned because if you play the games you know there's no way that that they're actually that big Maybe the, you know, the Enforcer Sentinels or something are, are around that size or larger, but that's insane. Next, they had the uh, the room with the Icon, uh, a Flood Infection form, and your boy Guilty Spark, which is the best Halo character of all time, let me tell ya. And then after that, we went into the Honeybee experience. Basically, the Honeybee is a vehicle, it's a remote-operated drone, actually. Uh, that they used to look into a halo ring and basically you go into this big room it's kind of like orb shaped uh, with a dome and m me, Zoe, Sean and Fernando just kind of sat on the floor with our legs out just taking it all in and uh, you know no videos allowed so I'll have to just describe it to you but basically you dive in and through Forerunner systems and it's it's really crazy and at the very end Master Chief makes a little cameo it's really cool but the coolest thing was looking all around us in the room like tilting our heads all the way around and seeing this gigantic halo ring and like watching as we entered it through through atmosphere and everything else it was it was something else and it also included a lot of creatures from um, the halo one original uh, for Mac and all these creatures that I uh, they've made it to the books and and quite possibly could make it into halo infinite which is really neat um, so after that I didn't have a lot of time left but I knew for sure one major thing I wanted to do was play Reach PC, and I did. Um, I got to play Tip of the Spear. I don't have a lot of good footage, um, a lot of it corrupted and, you know, what have you. But basically, it was it was smooth, super smooth. I died like ten times trying to use the default controls because after you started, you couldn't change them. And I just wanted to get in it 
So after a minute I got used to it and I beat the whole mission um, from beginning to end using the skips and everything else. Basically, you play Tip of the Spear um, from beginning to end and it, it was smooth. There was absolutely no frame drop, there were no issues that I could find at all. I didn't have a lot of time to search for them, but it was very, very fun. It, it, it looked the best that I had ever seen Reach play. And it very, very obviously played better than it did backwards compatible on Xbox One. So that's that's worth mentioning. It was very, very, very cool. Um, next thing was Fireteam Raven. They didn't allow you to play the full game. You could get back in line and come back and play another mission. But it, anyway, like I was there by myself at that point and I managed to play it. So I can say I played every Halo game now. It was it was fun. Basically, Fireteam Raven uh, is about the ODST squad from uh, that were they're they're most, mostly new characters, but the thing is it ties in a lot with the events expanded upon in the book Halo the Flood, which basically tells the other side of everything that was happening away from Chief's view uh, during the conflict on Installation 4. So that was really interesting, really re pretty fun, running with a shotgun and a rocket launcher and taking out Flood and stuff. Really, really cool. Um, so overall, here's uh, there's a bunch of extra stuff we could talk about. So there's uh, a picture of all the merch that I got there. Lots of cool stuff, just fun little things. And then, um, of course, I got my shirt with uh, my name on it on the back, which is pretty neat. Which is actually convincing me to to go to Windows Store tournaments and stuff like that that I wouldn't have gone to before. But I just feel like I just feel the need now. Another cool thing was there was a wall uh, at the very beginning I forgot to talk about that had a uh, that had all the scale representations of how the Covenant stack up height wise. Uh, so here's me by a bunch of those and uh, the the size. Uh, I think the prophets were kind of cheating because they're in the chair, but the size of the brutes and the hunters really blew me away. So that that's really cool. And here's my sister proving that she's shorter than a grunt, and his feet aren't even on level, as you can tell in the picture. So it's pretty pretty funny. Also, after that, we can see what else we got. We got weapons. We got uh, the Needler uh, replica right here. That's really really cool. My sister got some cool shots of it. Me. Not so much. My shots are pretty lame. Uh, here's a carbine to show you the full size of that. That's insane. Next you have Lasky's suit, which is really cool. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think that's the actual one that was like worn in the Forward and Dawn or anything like that, but um, still neat. And different walls of the Spartan branches, and then you have uh, an assault rifle, and uh, I think it's the MA-5B. Um, I'll have to look into it later. I'm probably probably getting it wrong. It looks more like the one from Reach, but anyway, you have that. Then you have the uh, Combat Evolved Magnum, which is fantastic. And then you have a ship, which at first I thought was the Spirit of Fire, uh, but it actually turns out it's not. It's actually the uh, CAA First Reverie. So I'm not actually sure what uh, what event that is in. I'm still catching up on the books after all this time, but. Uh, I didn't really get to get any clean shots of the undercarriage of that thing. The lighting wouldn't let me, but it, it was the whole thing was really well done. Uh, and then you, next you have the Warthog, full-size Warthog, actually running Warthog with a real vehicle chassis. That was super cool. Um, so I took a few different angles of that, a few videos, and by this point you'll know that the videos are just cutting in randomly because this is such a large project to undertake and I've already spent so much time on it. So. Uh, apologies for any bad timing, but, you know. Then you have Noble Six's helmet from Reach, which is really cool. Uh, the flag uh, from the original, I guess canon-wise it's supposed to be from the original CTF games that Blue Team and the rest of the Spartans would play during training. And then, you know, they, they had talks on stage and everything else uh, where they discussed different things. I didn't get to ask any questions, but that's all right. I, I, may, I really just wanted to to be there and experience this this huge event with people who who really enjoy Halo as much as I do and and meeting people like Fernando is, is a huge reason to go to this sort of thing. Just meeting people who have a shared interest and in, and in bonding and, and seeing all the things that people have grown to do. 
I mean, I've made most of my friends through Halo. It's been it's been a great medium and a great uh, a great place for me to strengthen bonds and just generally just have fun. Um, the only downside that I can think of of Halo Outpost, and it's not even really a downside. Uh, I decided not to worry too much about it because I just wanted to live in the moment and and enjoy the event. But the app, and I know you've probably heard about it already, it had a lot of issues, had a lot of bugs, didn't really work out for me. But most of the time the staff was pretty generous where if you told them something didn't work, they'd believe you and they'd give you the, you know, they'd give you the respective dog tag for that specific thing. I didn't get all of them. I didn't really worry too much about getting all of them. That's really my only complaint though, sometimes things wouldn't scan, the app would crash, you know, yada yada yada. I don't think they had a lot of time to work on that app or, you know, think that it would be as huge a deal as it was, but people got really annoyed over it, which is fine, whatever, but it wasn't a big deal for me. But overall, it was a fantastic experience. I would definitely go if they had another similar convention style thing set up in the future. It's just I never imagined that this game I played on an original Xbox over and over and over would eventually keep me playing 18 years later to the point where there would be a huge convention and sold out of tickets and all these cosplayers and all these um, you know people getting on stage and playing together and and talking about reading the books and getting things signed and and having a real-life warthog and all these things there's super duper cool like it was a it was a fantastic experience one I'm really glad I got to have and and I know for sure I'll be jumping at the next one hey guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video I know it wasn't much of a review I know it was kind of just me diving into it and talking about my experience but all in all I think that's the best way to encompass something like this something so large in scale and and requiring so much work to do uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stick around for some more videos. See you later.